Good afternoon. This is Katherine Harris. I'm chair of the California OER Council. I'm also an associate professor of English at San Jose State University. And we're here today to talk about applying for AB 798 and faculty case studies and user stories. We've just released a couple of new exciting things. One is toolkit number three, and the other is just pointing towards Cool for Ed and a faculty showcase over there. In addition, we released the white paper on April 1st. Which, got, which has a study of faculty using OER textbooks for a semester so that we could see what people need, what faculty need, what student need, what IT needs in order to support faculty adoption of OER textbooks. Now, just a reminder that we will have just a couple of more webinars through April and then in May, the council as well well as Cool for Ed staff are holding open office hours, and you may forward uh, your draft of your campus plan to us, and we'll take a look at it, and, or we could meet you with you during those hour-long open office hours. Check the webinar schedule. We're adding them as we go along to see how many people want them or need them. The final reminder is that this big thing is due June 30th, and you can take a look at Cool for Ed, that front page, steps three and four as you go further along. So we've had one more person join us. Do you have a microphone, or do you prefer to use chat to say hello? I think it's Susan who joined us. Okay, so we'll let Susan get oriented. Now, Susan wrote in the registration that you're working on AB 798 proposal and that you're looking for ideas. So that's what we're here to talk about today is ideas for helping faculty to adopt OER and also giving you case studies for that. So these are some of the things you probably already know, but just in case you need some language to send over to other people about why faculty should adopt OER textbooks or OER materials. A lot of our materials and a lot of these surveys demonstrate over the last two years that students can't afford textbooks. They have increased exponentially uh, by about, some of them by about 300% over just the last five years. So students add that to their tuition in community colleges and Cal State schools, which has been increasing over the last four or five years. They, be, they feel they're becoming burdensome in terms of finishing their education. Adoption of OER textbooks and materials also offers a chance to collaborate with other faculty across disciplines, um, across their own disciplines and in their own universities or perhaps across community colleges or perhaps across uh, Cal State schools. We do have a number of faculty from the community colleges and CSUs who've who generously provided us with an e-portfolio and are open to talking to anyone else about the particular work that they've been doing. In fact, that might be an interesting faculty development process that you incorporate into your campus plan. It's having an e-portfolio faculty member either Skype in or come to your campus and give a professional development session. There's also, with adoption of OER, a uh, chance to publish in an emerging area. The use of OER has been well documented across the country. Studies of it have also started to be much more uh, documented, but with the release of the white paper on April 1st, we document the use in the CSUs and in the community colleges. There's some best practices that come out of that particular white paper and that research, and I'm going to just shift you over to that a little bit today. Uh, and and also the 16 faculty that we worked with gave us the things that went wrong, the things that went well, and incorporated some of these into their own e-portfolios. And the final thing, and this is, uh, we all do this every time we redesign a class or we have to redo a class we haven't taught in a couple of years, it gives faculty a chance to refresh their teaching, to see what else is out there, and to move beyond the for-profit publications. So here's a couple of examples. I'm going to just give you two that we know about here on the council, and people we've talked to or some of our council members uh, have been able to provide us with information that they use from, use from their own campuses. So in a large course adoption, and a large course could be general chemistry. Uh, a lot of places, both community colleges and CSUs, 
ask students to take that general education chemistry, it's typically for not for majors, uh, and students funnel through it, all of them, um, at some point or other in their college career. The traditional text is around $235. The OpenStax textbook is zero. If students would like a print copy of it, it's anywhere between $20 and $35 to order themselves an open sax print version that's beautifully bound in a hardcover, but that would be up to students. The, the open sax version is available digital and online. So we do recommend asking faculty to give their students the tutorial that we've created on how to read and study from digital textbooks. So if you have four sections of 100 students, and that's in each of the sections. And your savings is going to be 100% because that would be the only textbook that would be offered. And then you get $235 savings. You've saved $94,000 just from four sections. And that's what you need to demonstrate when you're doing your campus plan. Now, th this is something we've come across in a lot of different departments, especially with the sciences. There's a course coordinator or somebody or uh, a committee that's been designated to work with a particular textbook and assign it for everybody, and they're doing reviews of it and things like that. A lot of the faculty who are teaching these lower division general education courses are tend to be adjunct faculty in the surveys that we have been uh, asking people to participate in. And we've also found that with OpenStax or other textbooks that are OER, that there might be a homework website that's about $50. Now, that could be outside. That could be the only thing that students have to pay for, and that would be outside of the OER savings, and you wouldn't necessarily have to demonstrate that. Uh, Kim Wiki is a, another uh, chemistry website. It's completely online. It's Web 2.0 capable, meaning that a lot of the information is all online and it's more than just hyperlinks or a linear print text PDF uh, that you can use. And it's completely free and available right now to anybody who wants to use it. And the person who, Delmar Larson at UC Davis, who is the one who's working with KimWiki and created it, says that a lot of faculty want that homework website to help their students move through that. A second example is a potential small course uh, adoption rather than thinking in, in the larger way. So American demographics and lifestyles, this is just one example we have from our e-portfolios. It's one section and 40 students and the text is $100. So just from that single section you could save $4,000 by using the OER textbook. It's taught by one faculty member once per year. Um, Ten small course adoptions could save $40,000 if you're going to just do this section by section section rather than thinking about the large biology sections and, and, the, and the ones that are taught multiply. The only thing that faculty struggle with is they really need help in finding these OER textbooks. Uh, and they rely on library staff or they rely on listings that they can find. And I'm going to take you over to show you some of these right now by sharing my desktop. So if you go over, and I bet many of you who are, we've got three people in here now, I bet many of you have already seen the Cool for Ed site because you've probably gone over there to take a look at the proposal. We have e-textbooks for review already over here. Now these have been identified as uh, relevant for highly enrolled courses across the CSUs, UCs, and community colleges. And these textbooks have gone through rigorous peer review. So you can go through and see that these, these all here have already been reviewed, and so you can send faculty here to find these kinds of things. We also have a course showcase, and in here we have the CID number, which is the articulation number. If you're struggling to work, find faculty to work with and you want to send them someplace, send them to the course showcase so they can see the different textbooks that are found based on these different courses. And then finally, uh, we have the faculty showcase. And here we have, you can see it's segregated out by business, education, humanities, mathematics, and statistics, 
Science and Technology, and Social Science. Let's just go to Social Science for grins. So here we have Vera Kennedy, and she's created not only a course description, but she's created an e-portfolio. And in this e-portfolio, she doesn't just describe the textbook and the course, but she also describes what happens when she adopted this textbook. She provides more pedagogical point of view for faculty to take a look at who might want to adopt this particular textbook. She talks about student access student feedback and participation, as well as in the middle column, she's got curricular changes, teaching and learning impacts, as well as what those teaching and learning impacts or the student learning objectives or the student learning goals, however your acronym works on your campus. She's also provided a sample assignment and a syllabus. So all of these e-portfolios are available to anybody who would like to take a look at them by going over to Cool for Ed and simply clicking on Faculty Showcase. I'm going to take you over to toolkit number three, which we just released. And let me show you here the URLs for every all the links for today will be available at the end of the day. We'll transfer these to a PDF that's all clickable, completely clickable. Hang on a second, nothing's sharing, it's just supposed to. Okay, so you should be seeing our OER toolkit number three right now. We've just released this it was Friday and then we've filled it out more uh, as of today as well. So we have user stories and case studies. These are very brief videos of faculty use of OER. And it's not just faculty speaking and proselytizing about the use of OER. They actually were very honest about their use, how they incorporated it, and what were the successes and failures of it. And let's go take a look at Ruth Guthrie's. Hello, my name is Ruth Guthrie, and I teach at Cal Poly Pomona in the Computer Information Systems Department. That's in the College of Business, and I'm responsible for a course called CIS 310 Management Information Systems. And uh, just in fall this year, we adopted an OER textbook called Information Systems uh, for Business and Beyond. I'm also a member of the California OER Council, and it really opened my eyes to how many choices there were that were alternatives to publisher-based textbooks. And so when I became the, when I reluctantly became the person in charge of this course, I thought, well, if I'm going to be in charge, I'm going to select the book. But, but it wasn't just me. There were actually three OK textbooks we found that were open source free books, and we had a faculty committee look at the three books, and this one that we selected was by far the best of the, the three. And then I had a little faculty buy-in because I had two colleagues help me select the book. Yes, we thought about mixing the books, but it seemed like for our students it would be more clear to have one source. And it was really great that it was a CC by copyright because we had looked at this book and felt that there were a couple of missing things that we'd like to develop ourselves. And so having an open license and being able to cut it up, we could insert our own chapters wherever we saw fit. Uh, it's actually uh, materials that faculty developed. So we were lacking a chapter on data warehousing, business intelligence, and uh, e-commerce, and those chapters are in progress and will probably be implemented by the end of the term. 
this is a cover of the book we adopted, and we found it at sailor.org, and it's written by David Borgios. Uh, what we liked about the book is the writing style. It's very engaging to students. It has some nice, nice examples and uh, questions and activities at the end of each chapter, and um, that we could uh, cut it up and give it to students as they saw fit. And of course, because it's free, the traditional costs $150. And for them to go to a free book was really, really quite visionary um, for our campus, and especially in the College of Business. This is a very large course. There's typically 70 students in a section, but we teach maybe five or six sections a term. We teach in quarters, so that's three terms a year. And the annual enrollment is uh, about 1,200 students. And so if you do the math, you can see it's quite a significant savings. So the book from Sailor did not have PowerPoint slides and did not have a test bank and a couple of other things that we thought would be nice to have. And so we actually applied for a grant on campus so that we could give faculty professional development funding to develop the things that we felt we needed to make this book succeed. So the faculty created a test bank. And we divided up the work, and three faculty worked on different chapters. As I said before, we're authoring separate chapters that we'll share with everyone. And then we made PowerPoint presentations for all the chapters in the book. And a nice thing about this is that the author of the book found uh, out about our work. We have a public website where anybody can access the information. And he asked if he could use our PowerPoints. And we said, of course you can. And then I got an email from somebody at Dartmouth who is trying the free book also and asked if he could use the materials. And I said, go right ahead, help yourself. Uh, the other materials we built that were kind of beyond the Okay, so you see Ruth Guthrie's conversation about that. When you go over to toolkit number three, and let's just go over to that slide, these case studies, there are six faculty so far uh, from the CSU and the community colleges, and they're all 10-minute videos, and they all provide ideas about how they integrated OER and how it expanded beyond just saving students money in terms of the benefits of using OER. And to get over to, you can use this U URL to go over to Toolkit 3 to see anybody else, or you can just go to uh, the Cool for Ed front page website and scroll down on step three, and you'll see a link to Toolkit number three in there as well. So we have encapsulated in all of these user stories and case studies faculty from a variety of different disciplines as well as different community colleges and CSUs. And we're going to add about six more as we go along in the next two weeks, just as long as we can get them put together. And there was also somebody that's here. Uh, in terms of just signed on with us, who's also interested in more information and more ideas. And I'm going to assume that what you mean is the professional development workshops or getting faculty involved. How do you construct your campus plan and engage faculty? See, one of these campus, um, part of your campus plan can also include professional development on how to work with faculty, but also how to engage them in different sections. For instance, you might have identified a few faculty who are already using OER but would like to expand more of it. What if you want to give a professional development workshop using those particular faculty members to tell other people? So you can use the ones who are already working in OER to help you with bringing in other faculty. Faculty. And this is toolkit number two. It's also accessible from the Cool for Ed website. If you go to home, and you'll see that toolkit one is under step one, toolkit two is step two, and newly released step three toolkit is also available.
So Toolkit 2 provides you with some sample workshops that you could provide to your faculty during the fall semester and continue on with those in the spring semester about how to use OER or getting faculty together to talk about the bibliography of, of OER, building a community, discipline-specific OER needs, working with OER textbooks and materials and teaching and learning. And one of the things that we have newly introduced that some of you may not have seen, we don't really often talk about teaching our students how to read on electronic devices. So one of the council members, Diego Bonilla, created a video tutorial on how to use and read from electronic devices. And you can pick and choose what you would like your students to watch. You can tell how much time it's going to take. The tutorial overall is 36 minutes, but you may want them to just watch a five minute section of the particular tutorial. So one of the things that's happened and that I've also been seeing as a teacher, when I go in and I expect students to have these basic skills, because they are using technology and digital interface all the time, I expect expect them to understand how to study off of these electronic devices and materials as well. But they don't necessarily know how to do that. So a professional development project could be asking your faculty to look at these and start to embed them into your classes in terms of this reading tutorial. I noticed a couple of people just joined us. We were just watching Ruth Guthrie and the our Cool for on our council members channel on YouTube, and this is listed in toolkit number three. We've got several people for you to look at. With more to come. So the next thing that I wanted to show you was the fall pilot project and the faculty e-portfolios. We had 16. Um, faculty work with us from the CSUs and the community colleges. They went to webinars uh, once a month with us and we talked about particular things concerning the adoption, use, and implementation of OER textbooks. We also asked these faculty to take an exit survey and they also asked their students to take an exit survey. Many of the faculty only adopted a chapter so they wouldn't have to increase their workload too much for this particular semester. And what they write about in their portfolios is the time time spent, and this is also captured in, in the exit survey as well, uh, what happened with the students. A couple of faculty also surveyed their students on quizzes. So they had a quiz with the regular textbook and a quiz with the e-textbook or the OER textbook. Some of them found no differences. Some of them found that students improved slightly. None of them found that, that it decreased student performance or participation. Some faculty also tied it to student learning goals and then surveyed their own students with their own surveys afterwards. But in the white paper that we released on April 1st, we provided a study of these faculty e-portfolios. Uh, and here we have adoption motivation, student feedback, teaching and learning impacts. And this is all summarized for you. You can see that this starts on page about page 54. Curricular changes. And then we link to all of the portfolios that were represented in this particular study, if you are, in case you're interested in linking one portfolio with the other. I hope that that gives you some ideas about not only professional development, but how can you implement this cost savings on your campus in particular. Let's go back over to collaborate in the slides. So I've gone through all of my content and all of the slides, and I want to offer you an opportunity to talk to us about your concerns or where you are in the process itself. And I'm also going to stop the recording so you can speak freely. <laughs>